Kyrie Irving vanished. No one had seen or heard from him in weeks. Not even the NBA knew where he was. In fact, they've just launched an investigation into his absence. The three-headed Hydra the Brooklyn Nets were supposed to put out on the court every night in the wake of the James Harden trade did finally make an appearance though. Unfortunately for Brooklyn, it was promptly beheaded by Colin Sexton and the feel-good Cleveland Cavaliers in a double overtime loss that is exactly the kind of clutch game you'd expect those three scoring machines to close out. As the Cavs last 17 points, looking for 20! Oh my! Perhaps the return of Irving has shed light on the fact that the big three might not be all it's cut out to be? Maybe Kyrie is up to his old antics and trying to maneuver a move out of Brooklyn? His fellow teammates certainly seem to enjoy life better without him. Securing wins over the Orlando Magic and Milwaukee Bucks with 74 and 64 points combined, respectively. Those comfortable wins in which both stars shown have to raise the question of whether the big three are truly necessary and worth the price the Nets paid to get them. Kyrie Irving didn't feature in a game from the 6th of January, well, before the James Harden trade was announced, until the Cavs match on the 21st. It looked for all intents and purposes like he's fallen off the face of the earth. See what we did there, Flat Earthers? You're welcome. He wasn't seen or heard from throughout that time either, disappearing after he informed head coach Steve Nash that he wouldn't be playing against Philadelphia due to personal reasons. Nets coach Steve Nash said he's texted him but wouldn't divulge what was said. I, I don't know. I've sent him a message. Just I just found out. <clears throat> so I just sent him a message in the last half hour and I uh, haven't heard back yet. But... um you know, obviously thinking about him and hope uh, all is well and, uh, and it's, yeah, it's a private matter. Given Kyrie's tendency to rub teams up the wrong way and make decisions about his future with teams on a whim, see the commitment to Boston followed by abrupt U-turn and decision to leave Cleveland to be his own man, we think something big might be brewing. There's no real way to ease into this, so we're just going to come out and say it. Kyrie Irving is going to be traded, ladies and gentlemen and we think he's going to the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, before you start swearing at your screen, just hear us out. We think Kyrie Irving has had something of an epiphany in light of the recent James Harden trade. He's made it no secret throughout his career that he has a desire to be the main man on a team. He left Cleveland for just that reason. When he was outshone by Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Terry Rozier in his time at the Boston Celtics, he left again. When he joined the Brooklyn Nets, he joined a young team with no real stars to speak of and instantly became their franchise player and focal point. While the Nets were certainly decent with Irving and the strong role players they had, everyone could see they needed a little more to become title contenders. Enter Kevin Durant. Now, Kyrie can live with KD joining what we're sure he thinks of as his team. KD won two rings with the Golden State Warriors playing alongside two other legit stars, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. He proved he can share the ball and the fun of dismantling teams enough that Kyrie would still feel comfortable that he can get his turn in the spotlight and be a focal point of the team. All that goes out the window with James Harden's arrival, so what does Kyrie do? He sets off to prove the earth is flat. Well, I did give you, because you seem like a pretty bright guy, so I gave you this, and maybe like you can at work, you can look at this. This is a gift for you. He feels rumors that he isn't happy by not suiting up for the team and stating his reasons for not doing so as personal, which it turns out may be a load of rubbish after reports then surface suggesting the all-star point guard simply didn't want to play. He vanishes for a couple of weeks and really pisses off the Brooklyn Nets, so much so that when he comes back and says, I want to leave, the Nets go, good, tell us where and we'll get rid of you. Fair play to him, he came back and turned in a hell of a performance to show that he is still an elite level player, possibly to boost his trade value a bit as well if you catch our drift. Now that's where things get interesting. The Nets were missing Kyrie for over two weeks and did pretty well without him. He came back and they got beaten by a young and overperforming Cavs team in the first game the big three played together. If that's an indication of things to come, the Nets may just bite the bullet and trade him if they feel mortgaging their future on a big three that might not work was a mistake. We know they aren't going to ship Kyrie to another team in the East. He's a good enough player to make an average team good. I mean, that's the same thing he did with the Nets. It also seems likely that Brooklyn and its coaching staff are expecting a few teething problems with their new pairing of KD and James Harden. We don't imagine it's easy integrating a guy who only passes the ball in return for snacks into any team. They went all in on the Harden trade and will want as easy a route to the NBA Finals as possible. It's vital for them to show that going all in for Harden was the right call, especially given how badly this went for the Nets last time they tried it. Remember the Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Darren Williams super team idea? The Nets have only just recovered from that and now they've gone and mortgaged their future on a super team yet again. 
So if they move Kyrie Irving, they will surely move him west in an attempt to water down the Eastern Conference talent pool. The West, for the most part, is stacked with elite point guards. Some teams have established guards they simply won't move. These include Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, Jamal Murray, Ja Morant, and De'Aaron Fox. Then there are those point guards who are new to teams and or are a perfect fit in teams they're on. These include Drew Holiday, Mike Conley Jr., Chris Paul, and Patrick Beverly. Lastly, there are teams with young point guards who they want to give a chance to play and develop. Those players are Lonzo Ball, Shea Gilgius-Alexander, and DeJounte Murray. That leaves the Rockets, Mavs, and Lakers as teams that could use an elite-level point guard. Of those three, the only ones likely to take on a player who can be such hard work are the ones with a player on the roster who's won it all with Kyrie before. It may seem crazy to suggest that the Nets would blow up their big three and send Kyrie to the Lakers after only a few weeks. However, if Kyrie is going to be difficult to manage and the Nets can see that they're an elite level team with just KD and Harden, which they are, then trading him makes sense. Kyrie must also surely know he's instantly become the third wheel on this team, particularly given how ball dominant James Harden's game is. A star who went looking for his own team surely won't be happy just standing on the three-point line watching James Harden dribble the ball between his legs for 20 seconds before stepping back so far he's in the arena food court and launching a three in between bites of his fifth burger. We think Kyrie wants out. He's realized what the Harden trade means for him and he's acting up to force through a trade to a new destination and we think that destination is the Lakers. Sure, there are two stars in LA already, but they're likable stars and willing passers who are all about winning. The same can't be said of Harden who seems allergic to the team basketball needed to take that final step and win a championship. Plus, the Lakers know LeBron can't keep going forever. Sacrificing a bit of depth and some draft picks for an AD Kyrie one-two punch when the King calls it a day seems like a pretty sensible trade to make, especially given the Lakers roster is mostly veterans on decent contracts. They could even bring in some of what remains of the Brooklyn roster's wealth of young players. We really think the deal makes sense, so much so we've put together a potential trade package that could work for both sides. The Lakers would get Kyrie Irving, a Where's Waldo book with Waldo swapped out for Kyrie Irving, Bear Grylls and some camping gear on a 10-day contract so they could send him out to find Kyrie if he goes missing again, lasso him and drag him back to Brooklyn, a Burger King black card courtesy of James Harden, and… okay, we're just kidding. In truth, a package that could work here would involve the Lakers gutting a lot of their roster. The trade would have to be conducted after the 20th of February so that Contavious Caldwell Pope could be included in the deal. The Lakers would then have to send him, Montrez Harrell, Dennis Schroeder, and Wesley Matthews to the Lakers in return for Kyrie and Landry Shamit. They'd likely also have to include a couple of draft picks as the Nets would be keen to recover some of the future they threw out the window to acquire James Harden. The Lakers could also include Kyle Kuzma, a player who has struggled to consistently perform for the team and get Spencer Dinwiddie in return. It's a lot of squad depth to give up for sure, but getting Kyrie almost certainly assures the Lakers of a couple more rings over the next few years given they just won one. The draw of dominating the league for four or five years as the Warriors did recently is huge here. It also draws attention to another factor to consider before dismissing the idea of Kyrie going to the Lakers off the bat. LeBron wants seven rings. That's the only record he has left to chase. He just won his fourth, but other teams in the league have retooled and are ready to go again in an attempt to stop him winning another this year. Most notable of those teams is the Nets. KD, Harden, and Kyrie, even a disgruntled Kyrie, are an incredibly tough team to pick against and LeBron knows that. Therefore, it wouldn't be a surprise to see LeBron lean on Jeannie Buss and the Lakers in the event it became known that Kyrie wanted out. LeBron and the Lakers would much rather they were the super team with the three-headed Hydra than another team in the league. LeBron also knows he can work with Kyrie, even if it wasn't always smooth sailing in Cleveland. It also works for Kyrie because he gets to play with teammates who will happily defer to him in big moments. If you need a reminder, take a look at this massive three over Steph Curry to secure the win and the championship for Cleveland in Game 7 of the 2016 NBA Finals. Irving and Curry, one-on-one, -on -one. Irving puts it up, it's good! We also think Kyrie has learned the hard way that being the focal point of a team isn't all it's cut out to be. It's much more fun to share the stage with another star or two you get along with, and we imagine he's quite keen to repair burnt bridges with LeBron. He can be the best point guard in our league and also be an MVP in our league. 
The chance to be part of a dynasty is also surely tempting for a player who's failed to cover himself in glory since setting off on his own in an attempt to get out of LeBron's shadow. In fact, the pull of a dynasty is likely a significant factor here, especially for a Lakers franchise with a track record for compiling teams who win multiple championships on the bounce or over an extended period. Don't get us wrong, a Kyrie to the Lakers trade is a stretch. We know that, but it's the kind of stretch that makes sense when you really look at all the moving pieces. Kyrie's extended absence coupled with his history of exiling himself from teams and LeBron's desire to chase down seven championship rings before he retires makes it the perfect combination of madness that results in just this kind of trade happening. We might be wrong. In fact, it's highly likely we are wrong. However, if we're right and Kyrie Irving ends up suiting up for the Lakers, it will surely be one of the best stories and biggest trades since, well, since Harden moved to the Nets, really. Still, it would shift the landscape of the league and set up a potential dynasty for the Lakers, and that would be something we'd certainly love to see. Like this video if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.